iDubs. Yeah. It's, uh, we're watching... <coughs> we're watching his response video, probably to the retaliation that he had from his other video. And I, I, I would like to run through it with you guys, because this is, uh... It's unfortunate. It really is to kind of go through you with you guys. This is the video he made addressing Froggy Fresh and that whole thing. Absolutely, Jamal. I was one of the people who disliked the videos. I just, I don't agree. But yeah, he got absolutely demolished in terms of ratio. But yeah, so he created a new video. I'm assuming from the backlash of this video because this is this is bad this it was really bad so i've already watched the video to kind of gather my thoughts and ideas before i even started streaming but we are going to watch it again here and that way some people who haven't seen it you guys get to view it and we'll go through with that this is uploaded like 11 minutes ago well it's probably a little later now yeah there you go. 27 minutes. Uh, just reading through some of these comments, man. <laughs> Jesus. Okay. I'm so glad you've grown as a person, and it's good to see you own it up to it publicly. Idubs is so serious these days, I haven't seen him laugh or smile in what feels like the longest time. Yeah. <laughs> I have a lot of opinions, obviously, as anyone would, on his wife. I, I probably mispronounce it too. Antisa, Anista, I apologize. But... When it comes to relationships, oftentimes you're going to have a woman in your life who will be a little controlling. And it kind of is what it is, but there is a limit and you don't let that affect your personal or your professional life. Now, I don't know. Obviously, no one really knows if that's what's happening here with iDubs. Poor fucking guy, man. But like no one knows because we're not there, right? We, we can only make speculations or assumptions, and th that's all they are in the end, are assumptions and guesses. But there's a lot of things that have happened in their relationship that I personally would deem a red flag, and I wouldn't want to be in that relationship anymore. And to be fair, that's also personal, right? Like, um, Anista has a OnlyFans. I do not want to have... I don't want my significant other to have an OnlyFans. That's, to me, that's... That sexual part of your life is something we share, right? It's not something I want you to be posting publicly, you know, that, but that's personal preference, right? So we're going we're gonna to see. We're going to pop into this and <laughs> we're going to see how bad. Or uh, I don't know, I, I, that's foreshadowing, but we, we let's just see how this is because it's, uh, it's going to be interesting. Oh, it's still muted. Good job. For a while, I felt like if I changed my content over time, that people would see that as a reflection of who I am and what I value. Uh, but I, I'm starting to realize that that is a very weak and passive way to, you know, run my channel and live my life. So I, I think it's... You know, if I'm going to have the balls to go to Tana's uh, fan meetup and say slurs at her and then make a video about how it's okay to say slurs, I, I think I should have the balls to make an apology video and take accountability for the mistakes I've made. So that's what this video is. I've realized that I need to be crystal clear about what I believe so there's no room for ambiguity. I am responsible for creating a lot of hurtful and damaging content on this channel. And I've also created a culture of uh, apathy and I don't know, a lot of like cruelty as well. Like He's referencing content cop here, and I'll get into it a little bit later. But the, peop the people you made the videos on didn't not deserve it. 
you know? And it's not like people were going out of their way to physically assault or, like, commit crimes against these individuals. It's not that I'm aware of. It's just, that's not... That's a cop-out, I feel. You know, some of the videos I've made have been very... Not edgy. I don't think they, they, you know, some of these videos were edgy. I think they were just outright cruel. So I don't want people to, no. you know, get it confused about, you know, where I stand. I have made some cruel, hurtful content, and I need to acknowledge that, and I'm really sorry that it's taken me this long to acknowledge it. The content I'm talking about specifically are content cop videos and videos where I was uh, just generally criticizing people for very lackluster reasons. They were not lackluster reasons. You went after a lot of high-profile people on the platform who were very manipulative, very racist, very hostile, and some who actually have just straight-up committed crimes. Like, you were a pillar for if there was someone bad on the platform, we knew that you would lead the charge. You knew, we knew you would help us get rid of them. Fucking rice gum. Leafy is here. Right? Both commentary... Or sorry, Leafy was a commentary YouTuber, but we all know, kind of a dickhead. All he did was just bully people on the internet. That was his content. That was his go-to. Right? There wasn't really much uh, grace from that. Rice gum. Kind of a manipulative piece of shit. Big womanizer. Someone we don't really want on the platform. He doesn't provide benefit for anyone. And he led these charges against these people. Now, arguably, Rice Gum hasn't said or done anything since he challenged Jai Dubs to boxing, if we all remember that. But Leafy got straight up banned off the platform. And a lot of it was from the recognition that he caused from his content cop videos. They were not lackluster reasons, Ian. They, they, they weren't. Like These are people who did a lot of shit things and you were the only one who was willing to say it how it was without having to worry about public opinion they were shit people you said they were shit people here's a list of why they are shit people you know they they, they were not lackluster in any way shape or form and uh you know obviously didn't have any accountability online whatsoever on my end I was morally grandstanding and acting as if I am any better than any of these people that I was making content cop videos on, and I'm not. I'm a human. I'm a real human who makes mistakes, and you know I make a different set of mistakes than the people I was making videos on, but it doesn't matter. I don't... It, it, just because you make mistakes doesn't mean other people can't also be critiqued for making mistakes, all right? Like, Tana Mojo had a really, really shit history and very manipulative towards her audience. I straight up just lying about how situations went down. And you called her out on that, right? So, oh, this, this upsets me so much because it is such a, it's such a 180 turn in mentality and ideology that where the fuck does this even come from? And I know people will say, oh, it's an Easter. Is it, though? Like, I've seen some really crazy shit when it comes to relationships, but to have a woman completely change, like, a man's own ideologies over the course of not even that long, like, three, four years, maybe a little longer, that's, that's fucked up to me. That's crazy, because nothing you did, no one thinks of you as a bad pe person for going after these people. No one does. And the people who do think you're a bad person for going after these people are part of the problem, right? They, they are willingly enabling these people to be on the platform. So where the fuck is this coming from? Did you just finally cave in? Are you letting these people get to you, man? You called out really scummy people on the internet. <laughs> I think anyone deserves that level of cruelty or hate. It's also indoctrinated a lot of people into thinking that this is an okay way to behave. And it's not. It's No, I absolutely think it is okay to behave. If you find a shit person anywhere in the world, doesn't matter if he's online or you know him in real life, you call that fucker out. Because if we don't say anything, those bad behaviors will go unchecked. And that is more problematic than how we act or how we respond to bad people. Being okay and being oblivious to the fact that they exist in the first place means fucking nothing. 
they need to be called out and they need to be reprimanded for the behavior that they exhibit in the world. It's not okay. You're acting like a dick. It's not okay. And this I wholeheartedly disagree with. I think if you're not willing to call people out for their bullshit, their bullshit is going to continue to happen. And that is not what we want in the world. It's super irresponsible and shitty. I am very insecure about my ability to create interesting content or like entertain. Uh, it's gotten better over the years, but it's something that I have struggled with constantly. Which I think is fair, right? Like, I don't know what the fuck that has to do with the apology you're making. Because I don't think your insecurity to make content has anything to do with why you went after these people in the first place. I don't think you went after these people because they it would have been interesting content. You went after these people because, again, they were pieces of shit. But, like... Oh my fucking god, man. Yeah, I, I am a little bit fumed behind this because uh, me, a lot like every a lot of others, looked up to Idubs qu quite a lot. He was a model. He was a role model for a lot of us. For And they formed a lot of our moral compasses to how we deal with problematic individuals. Now, it, it, depending on the maturity of the individual, you, you obviously don't take every action from one person and use that as who you should be because that's you're responsible. That's stupid. You know, a lot of one person can do a lot of good, but can also symbolize a lot of bad. Now, in terms of his insecurity, everyone like struggles with that. Like I struggle with that. Like I, every time I stream, honestly, I don't know what the fuck I'm going to do. And it makes me nervous because I want to grow my platform and I can't because I don't know what I'm doing, but I do it anyway. You know, I, I, I stream because it's fun. And I have that luxury because I'm also not doing this as a financial like platform. I, I don't live off Twitch. I don't live off YouTube. I, I don't, I have an actual job, so I get it, but I, I think that's a bad reason. I think that's a cop out. And it's one of the reasons why I, you know, kept making this hurtful content. You know, I, I ended up pivoting it into other things because I, you know, I felt bad about it, like innately. Um, but it's still something that I struggle with, and I, I don't want you to interpret that as an excuse, but I hope that that is relatable to other creators who maybe struggle with the same thing. Uh, I'm not confident in my ability to entertain, and I think if I had to... Oh, sorry, I just now noticed this. He's having a hard time making eye contact with the camera. He is darting everywhere. Like, I know I have a bad habit, right? Because when I talk, I like to look at myself to make sure I don't look fucking stupid. Like, so when I'm talking, I'll usually look at my preview on my other monitor here. But, like, he's darting everywhere. Rely on my personality uh, to entertain people that I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't have any amount of success. And that is uh, really hard to come to terms with. I was being very bigoted in a lot of my videos, and I justified it because... You know, I didn't think it was too serious, and I thought that people were going to see that I had good intentions, you know. You did. Everyone thought that. No one didn't think that. And more importantly, the outcome of those videos were good, right? Like, I don't know. But that's so silly, you know. Casual racism is still racism. Casual bigotry is still bigotry. And, you know, I said a lot of things that uh, I, I look back at and I cringe now and I'm like, that is an awful thing to say. It, it doesn't matter what my intentions are. Like, if I'm hurting people, I'm hurting people. And, you know. I don't know about that. I, I think context matters in everything. And I think intent matters in everything. That's why in the court of law, it's not just, hey, did you kill that guy? No, it's was it self-defense or not. Intent and context matters, you know. And I think... To say that these videos were silly because it doesn't matter what my intent was, hurting is still hurting. I think that's bullshit. No, it's not, right? And it's not, it's very different from seeing a, like a five year old kid with his balloon on the street and boot kicking him across the road rather than seeing the abusive father smack the five year old kid a ton for no reason and you boot kicking him across the road. Like their intent and context, it matters in our society for a fucking reason.
And it's because everything requires context and context defers whether or not it was good or a bad decision. So to say that intent didn't matter, I think that's silly. Now, who the fuck knows what my intentions are? Like I, sarcasm and like uh, jokiness and jokey tone only goes so far, especially over the internet. Even r in real life, that's like an impossible thing to know with 100% certainty. I've just always had this dumb philosophy that I'm not responsible for, you know, my audience and uh, how they behave beyond what content I put out. You're not. Uh, and this is the key point here. Outside of the content he provides, that I think that's a very big distinction. You know, because uh, obviously if you make a video telling people to go fucking trash a person's house and they do, that's on you. Absolutely. Without a doubt, you are a bad person for that. But if people are going out and doing shit of their own free will, thinking it's because it's something that you want, even though you haven't told anyone that's what you want or haven't given any kind of innuendo or insinuation that that's what you want, that's not on you. Those people have an issue and they need to get help. You know, like, but that has nothing to do with you. So you, you shouldn't even be shouldering that in the first place. And uh, that's stupid. And it's it's led to a lot of hate and a lot of bad outcomes. And uh, I just want to make it clear that I am absolutely responsible for my audience. And, uh, you know, I guess if you want to, you know, look out for people who are red flags, it's definitely people who had my mentality that say, uh, I'm not responsible for what my audience does. I know that this apology isn't enough. But see, you're now broadening the entire terminology. You said before you're not responsible for viewers outside of the content that you create, but now you're just saying you're not responsible for them at all. Make up your fucking mind, man. Because there is a big distinction and a big difference between the two, as I've already explained. I, I've clearly done a lot of damage. You know, these videos have been up for a long time and, and have accumulated millions of views. I shouldn't be able to just make an apology video and walk away from it. This is something that I should live the rest of my life with, and I expect to. Uh, I've profited off of this bigoted content for years, and I've made a successful career out of it, and that's not right. Uh, I think that this is only a step in the right direction, and I know that a lot more needs to be done to even approach um, a life that I would think would be like uh, acceptable. I am running ads on this video and uh, any revenue uh, generated from this video, I'm going to match and donate to an organization that you know would have been particularly affected by the type of rhetoric that I've been spewing on this. What? <coughs> like, you're making it sound as if all of your content cop videos were created to attack random individuals on the planet, like on, on in the world. Like that's not the fucking case here. Because I, I last I checked, he didn't private them yet. Yeah. Oh, by the way, it's not to say his content hasn't been good, right? Like I think the Creator Clash one and two, aside from the drama, I think meant well. I think that's good content. I think. The hot seat with Dax, the fact that he's giving him like a platform and an opportunity, I think that's fantastic. That's great. Uh, and that growth as a YouTuber, that's fine, right? There's, there's no one saying you can't grow and become a better person. But you're falsely labeling the content that you made as something as awful or as bad. It wasn't. And people are going to say, well, Ivan, you just haven't grown yet. You just haven't matured enough. It, it's got nothing to do with maturity. The, the objective understanding of why he created those videos is sound, right? But anyway, let's go through. Because, again, he's going to donate a ton of this money <clears throat> to people who would have been affected by the kind of content he makes. And uh, again, this is referencing the content cop stuff. So the amateur food, food reviewers, right? Oh, he finally unlisted them. So wait, why do they still show up on the playlist then? Okay, anyway. Um... Anyway, going through, this is amateur food reviewers. His opinion was that the content meant nothing and it wasn't creative and they were just sitting in their car eating food and Joey's food, food Joey's World Food Reviews was <laughs> the fucking main 
like poster boy for the video, right? He didn't really go too hard into it, but I, I think that's a fair judgment to make. It's not creative content. Why would you want to make that, right? Now, the only, and I admittedly, I can see the argument where it says, well, it's content they want to make. Why you got to bully them for it, you know? Yeah, fair enough. You know, do what makes you happy, right? This one's Jinx. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, just seeing the older stuff it does put a smile on my face. Now, this guy, oh, fucking Jinx was a YouTube reactor, right? And <laughs> I want to see if he put the clip. He must have put the clip in here. But he was reacting to a clip where he's just sitting there like this. That 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 was his uh <laughs> that was his reacting. It, it was it was quite funny. But anyway, he made fun of this guy for not creating content. Again, right? Uh, you are just reacting. You are doing nothing. You are solely stealing these videos for revenue, which I think is a very, very good fucking argument, right? Like these people would re say nothing in their reaction at the end of the video. Be like, well, guys, that was that was a crazy video. No, like you said nothing. You provided no context. There's no commentary. You did. It wasn't transformative in any way, shape or form. All you took was a copyrighted piece of content, put it up in the middle of your fucking screen, and uploaded that. That's fucked up. I think that needs to be called out and you're a piece of shit. The toy reviews. This was crazy, because these popped up a ton, and a lot of lawsuits kind of came from it. Not from this video specifically, but I mean over time. But a lot of parents were getting sued because they were using their children as like work like workers, right? You were making a business and a product out of this. And I think this was a very dark environment to call out. And I'm very happy he did. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> this might get me taken down, but it's a very good fucking... YouTube for sponsoring this video. This isn't an egg. This is a box. I want an egg. I want, so, I want Kinder Egg. It's okay, honey. We'll get, you, we'll get you an egg next time. I want a Kinder Egg. I'm so excited. I wonder what's inside. Oh, here, here, honey. Always cut away from you. Cut, cut away from you. It's a, it's a Jinx bucket hat. <laughs> it's, a, it's so stupid. Like, looking back, the jokes are really, like, they aged. <laughs> but they're, they're still kind of funny. This was big, okay? I say all of these are big, because in fairness, to an extent, all of them are. He went into the fine bros but this was when they tried to copyright and trademark the word react and they would go after any video that was a react style of content very objectively piece of shit people this video again wholeheartedly attacked people who did a really shit thing and was a good leading force into getting them to undo it <coughs> so the, the, i don't really need to make much of an argument for this he went hard into them like it was a, a lot of a lot of comments a lot of a lot of jabs at personal appearance, right? And the, ar the argument can be made that where's the line when you're making this kind of content? Because yeah, it's okay to call out really scummy behavior, but where's the line from stuff that is and isn't okay? I, I can entertain that argument. I think that's fair. And I think there's a place for that argument. But again, to wholeheartedly disavow all of this content and say that it's not okay, I think that's misguided, and I think that's a little bit irresponsible in its own in its own right. <laughs> this is probably his biggest production, I want to say, in in terms of like value for um, for content cop, mainly just because of the song. MLG, hey now, you're a team star. Eat your popcorn, go tea and all I read. Fuck. Anyway, I'm not gonna go too much into it because you guys can go through these videos yourself. But I think the majority of these videos had precedent and had a point. Oh, he took down the rice gum video. <laughs> I just now realized he took down the rice gum video. Yeah, he took down the leafy one. I know that one. That one was obvious. Has no one re-uploaded the rice gum video? No. <laughs> right. 
right. All right, cool. I can't I can't find it. Oh, okay, that's what it was. Yeah, it was Jake Paul, but really it was Rice Gum. Yeah, okay. So thank God it was re uploaded. What we do here. Okay. Because I don't see it here. So, yeah, it was the Leafy is here and the Rice Gum video that was taken down, I guess. Which are very, like, those videos are like pinnacle videos. So, the fact that he took those ones down is a little weird. But, yeah, I suggest going through those playlists because they're not bad. Channel. And again, this isn't the end of what I'm doing, this is just the start. I don't feel like a lot of this content represents me as a person. Uh, at least not anymore. There was a time where it probably perfectly represented me because I was a nasty, apathetic, insecure person. Now, now that I don't feel like it represents me and I want to distance myself from it and keep it from, you know, indoctrinating more people, I'd like to unlist the videos so that people, you know, can access them still for whatever, you know, purposes they might want to do that for. Um, but it's not being proliferated on the website. I, I feel like that that's the best solution, at least for the time being. And for anyone who liked those videos, I, I you know, I want this video to be uh, an example and a lesson for you. You know, you can like content, but you can also think that it, it's irresponsible and it's hurting other people. So it, just tap into that part of your brain that's saying like, Oh, okay. It's like it's probably not that important that this video stays online because it. I don't like what he's doing here. He's really undermining these videos, trying to put them on a pedestal that they aren't important, they aren't good, and they are should generally be disregarded. And I'm actually kind of disappointed that because I, I think that's extremely manipulative. These videos, and I'm I sound like a broken fucking record, man, are pinnacle examples of what we as a platform should be willing to handle these individuals that you made videos on were not good people they were very bad fucking people and they deserved to have themselves called out for it there is no shame to be had in these videos in any way shape or form to say you didn't make mistakes in the videos well that's just stupid because you did right they weren't big mistakes to the point where you need to say to yourself, these videos mean fucking nothing. I think this is fucked. Truthfully, uh, I've seen it. I've experienced the content, but it's done a lot of damage. We, we can just let it, we can let it go. I'm sorry to everyone that I made content cop videos on. <laughs> I, I still don't like the majority of you, and that's fine, but I can recognize that you did not deserve the hate and harassment that I sent your way. Are you serious? <laughs> I don't need to touch that one. I think you guys know what I'm going to say. I particularly want to apologize to Tana. Tana, I'm sorry. I should have never made that video. I harassed Tana in person and then harassed her online. And that's deplorable behavior. It's so stupid. I'm also sorry to all the black viewers and minority groups who had to put up with that video and put up with, you know, the phrases. I, I said either it's all okay or none of it's okay. And that's just so dangerous and stupid. I have made content that I am proud of over the years. It hasn't been as consistent as maybe I'd like it to have been. But, you know, there is a lot of content that I think had a net positive on the world. And, you know, I'm going to strive to continue on that trend. Uh, but again, I'm not, I'm, I'm absolutely going to continue to make mistakes. But I want the mistakes to be a lot smaller and a lot less serious. I also want to give some clarity to the post-fight speech that I gave. I mean, it wasn't a speech. It was a... a phrase i was like you know i'm not i know i'm not everyone's cup of tea <laughs> but i i really do uh, appreciate the support and um oh it's got emotional thank you for coming okay like i'm not i'm not jabbing at him for it that's actually really cute that's emotional that's wholesome and, that, that's um, that's sweet uh, you know thank you for coming
that was addressing the people over the years that I neglected and I left behind. You know, the people whose feelings I, you know, didn't take into consideration. Those are the people who I was addressing as, I know I'm not everyone's cup of tea. Yeah, but that's life, man. Like, you, when you become a public figure, there are going to be communities and cliques of individuals that won't follow you and won't like you. That's fucking life. You know, like, you can't please everyone. It's impossible. So, to make to make yourself feel bad for neglecting certain individuals or certain uh, the emotions of certain people who weren't in your fan base in the first place, like that's not something you need to feel bad for. That's that's your fucking content. Those are your people who, like, they they're not in your community, man. So I I, I don't know where the fuck is coming from, but he's putting unnecessary weight on his shoulders. I, I this is crazy to me. Anyone who thinks that I should be shouting the N word from the rooftops, I don't want. No one thinks that. No one thinks that. <laughs> I want to be your cup of tea. Now I want to talk about events and situations that have happened over the past five years of my life that have led me to the place I'm at now. One year I was at a convention and a bunch of fans were, you know, wanting pictures. And this particular fan came up to me and said, I know you probably don't like transgender people, but can I, you know, get a picture? That smacked me in the face. I was like, oh, holy shit. Why would you think that? But I mean, it was fairly obvious. I was being cruel, hateful, bigoted, and uh, being very uncaring about people's feelings. What? <laughs> that doesn't mean you don't like transgender people, though. Like, a lot of my close friends, I'm a piece of shit with them all the time. But they are like that to me. But they know damn well I still have respect for those LGBTQ communities. Like, I don't disregard a human life altogether. You could be a piece of shit and be generally a more, like, a hard stone individual and not have to worry about not caring about a certain group of person that doesn't make any fucking sense yeah it feels bad that the woman that the woman or lady or whoever like it sucks that they thought that right that's unfortunate because yeah you matter and you do care like i do care and you matter but just because you weren't caring of people's feelings and you were mean to people that shouldn't be a telltale sign that you disregard the transgender community that's not how that works. That is not A and B make C. That is A and X try to make Y. Like, that don't make sense, Chief. I'm sorry. <laughs> that is a very fair assessment to make. No, it's not. I was giving this person bad vibes. And I think I've given a lot of people extremely bad vibes. Another event that was... I just think it's so fucking funny to hear... Like, this isn't really anything to do with him. I just think it's funny when people try to say, you got bad, bad vibes. Bad vibes. And I just think, it's bad vibes, man. It's bad vibes. Very important for me to experience was I went on a boxing podcast. I was basically, like, trying to walk back my uh, Tana content comp. Uh, you know, I was still very, like, insecure and uncomfortable with the fact that I made that video. And, uh, but I was still coping. You'll see me struggle in this clip to you know, say that it was wrong. So I just wanted to uh, let you talk on that, right? Because obviously uh, using the N-word is definitely frowned upon by a lot of people, especially by a non-African-American, but I was just curious. That was a very weird video because I wanted to like criticize her for her like sort of flagrant use of it. I've been pretty flagrant about it too, not in the same way. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I, I thought there was a message to be to be shared there. And um, I don't think it was particularly, it was okay in criticizing her, but I think it, like, I probably wasn't the person to deliver the message, if that and, makes sense. And, and there was a, a mess. Just because you're not the ideal person to deliver the message doesn't mean the message shouldn't be delivered in the first place. Now, <clears throat> I have to be careful with how I word this because it, it is a very touchy subject and I can recognize that. But the usage of the N word and other very homophobic or very transphobic, any kind of big slur, right? Uh, I am a firm believer in the sense that if you continue to want people not to say it, 
more and more people are just going to want to say it. And you are giving it the very power that you don't want it to have in the first place, right? You look at this, like the N-word as an example, okay? People look at this word and hold it in such high regard, right? That because of how high of a regard they hold it in, when someone says it, you get up in arms and furious about it. And now, in fairness, uh, the word itself has very, very negative connotations, absolutely. But, I mean, if you continue to want people to not say it, and if you want people to acknowledge that it's bad, but if you want to remove the power, you got to let it go, man. Like, and that sounds privileged, you know, a white person saying that, right? But, I mean, you could use any word under the sun for it. Right? Like, there's a lot of Asian slurs that are exist. There's a lot of you fucking Ukrainian slurs as well that exist that are negatively impacting my community and my, like, nationality. But if you let it bother the community, you're giving it that power that you don't want it to have in the first place, you know? And not everyone, and this is where people are either going to like me or hate me for this, but some people aren't emotionally mature enough to acknowledge that. And that's very unfortunate because we could be progressing further as a society and our linguistics could be changing dramatically with the, that acknowledgement. And it's just not going to happen because some people are just too straight and firm about it. Like uh, to say all of it's okay or none of it's okay, like he mentioned prior, I, I think leaving that as the statement, I think that's a bit wrong, but there is meaning in that. Right. And that's the point I think he was trying to make that I explained here is that if you're letting it have that power, you're not helping anyone. Right. You're only making it worse and you're only giving it, again, that power you so desperately don't want it to have in the first place. I think, regardless of race, gender, or fucking, you could be purple for all I care, man. Like, but the point is that you matter. You are in this society just like the rest of us. So we have to make our best with what we have. And if you're going to section off words because it hurts your feelings, you need to grow up, man. A lot of people are going to say, well, it's not because it hurts my feelings, it's because there's history behind the word. Yeah, that, that's every word. Every word has history. It, it doesn't matter what the history is behind the word, it's how we as a society deal with it moving forward, right? But that's my piece. I don't want to dwell too well into it because I think... I, yeah. <laughs> that I was trying to put out there. And, like, I'm not really the person to put out that message. I don't regret making the video. I think, you know, there's there's uh, bits and pieces to take from it that I think are valuable. Uh, but, you know, I probably would. It's not coping. There are valuable pieces of information. We make it these days. I'm very grateful to those guys and how they uh, broached the subject because, you know, it didn't put me on the defensive. It just made me realize, like, I'm stupid. I'm stupid and I really need to like acknowledge these things. Like, like what am I doing? I'm still trying to make excuses for myself and like, you know, why I made that video. It's like, it was a dumb idea. I harassed someone. I was saying slurs and I was trying to justify it all. A very big thing that has sort of altered my view on all of this is just the amount of hate and harassment my wife Anissa has received over the years. Uh, I will admit, I, I, sorry, I, I have to note on this as well. I do think that's out of pocket, a thousand percent. I, I think she's done things that I personally don't agree with, but in the end, it's your opinion, man. Like, the, <laughs> like every relationship is different and the expectations from a relationship are different from person to person. Uh, if you... I, I she's done things that I personally don't agree with, right? But I'm not going to go out of my way to make sure that she hears them, right? They're her decisions to make. And if in the end, if Ian has a problem with it, he's going to break up with her. He's going to make a, an issue with it or try to figure it out, right? Because that's what responsible people do. But yeah, I, I do think the bullying that she's gotten and the harassment has been a little out of pocket. <laughs> like, it's been a little much. At the start, it was like, okay, yeah. A couple of jabs here and there, you know, it's it's nothing too major, but this is like a theme now. I, I do think that was a bit much. She's had to deal with it from the beginning of our relationship, and I have done a horrible job at acknowledging her and her feelings for it. I a lot of the time I just thought that that was that was her problem or that was um 
you know, other people's problem. Like, it's not my problem that you're getting hate and harassment. And it's like, no, it absolutely is. You know, that's the culture that I cultivated. And I, I think it's less the culture. <laughs> I don't know. This is a tricky one. I'll admit this is a bit of a hard one to kind of, to navigate. But again, uh, I made it clear. I think it was a little out of pocket with how hard things got. But um, <laughs> I'm really trying to... Because this is, to be honest with you, a very hard social dynamic right now to navigate through. You could have said something. Hey, studios, welcome to chat. Uh, you could have said something. You could have made some kind of acknowledgement. But... I don't think you should have let it bother you, you know, because it's the internet. People say a lot of dumb shit. People are very like prone to harassment on the internet. That's that's the community. That's the environment. And I, I guess in a way, that's kind of an excuse. But I mean, you can't go around life letting people like that bother you. You can't, right? Because if you do, you, your life isn't run by you anymore, right? So I'm not making an excuse for saying that that behavior is okay. But I am saying that you shouldn't be letting people like that bother you. You know, that's not that's not healthy. You know, I, you know, didn't do anything to change that. You know, over the years, it's changed a little bit. But, you know, I don't think I've still fully uh, acknowledged how how responsible I am for the amount of harassment that Anissa has had to deal with. And this year, I decided to speak more candidly and, and be more open about who I am as a person and to speak on my life a little bit more. And I did that on Anthony Padilla's podcast. These are the people that I'm attracting. These are the people that I'm entertaining. Mm. Like, I need to reevaluate things. They are relating and enjoying this content for a reason. And that's not maybe the same reason that I'm trying to make i had a very wild west mentality when it came to online uh, mm -hmm. behavior like people are going to do what they want to do people are going to say what they want to say um and i can pretty much do the same because uh, it's the internet mm -hmm. um but i think you have to be a lot more responsible if you guys are at all interested in how i've arrived here that video gives you know a good bit of context and talks about some of my life a little bit there is a clip for what's going on so i dubs <laughs> I don't want to say it's the end of his career because I think that's that's uh, that's disingenuous. But he made a video kind of addressing a lot of the bullshit that's been going on, or I say bullshit, just a lot of his behaviors and action that is that he's kind of taken over the last little bit here. And we're just kind of going through and watching it because I, I've been a long time iDubs like viewer. And I have subscribed to his content. I'm not anymore, as you can tell. But what the straw that broke the camel's back for me was this video here, and he got absolutely fucking ratioed but just it seemed like a big cop out and i didn't agree with this video and i think he changed a lot as a person and not for the better anyway and this this is all going to be uploaded on my youtube channel as well i'm going to take this segment of the vod and upload that because i think this does need to be heard and i think this needs to be said and i don't know who else is going to be saying these things because i'm a small youtuber so no one's going to give a shit that i say them you know i don't think a lot of big youtubers are going to take the uh, the risk of saying it but yeah, so we're just kind of going through this video right now. You can tell how much I've had to say because we've been streaming for 46 minutes and this is a 17 minute video. <laughs> From this interview that's been floating around the internet and it's me calling my fans antisocial and basement dwellers. And I was like, I didn't like, you know, interacting with my fans. I just want to be clear, like, I, that was my realization. I think a lot of people are like, of course that happened is because you were creating that culture and you were attracting those people. And it's like, yes, I know. <laughs> I kind of don't know how to take that, to be honest with you. So he's, he, he thinks that the majority of the people who like the old iDubs content are basement dwellers and antisocial. I don't think that's accurate. I just don't think that is. Like, obviously, I can only speak to myself, right? So I can't really speak to other people. But, like, there are a lot... I'm a very social individual. I'm a, I'm a very egotistical individual as well, to be fair. So it's very hard to hurt my feelings. And it's very hard for me to, to like, take, like, critique. But 
I'm a very outgoing person. I love talking to people. Like there are times I just go out to bars just to fucking talk, right? And that's because I like that social engagement. I like to see how people act and how people react to certain like conversations. That's just who I am. But I don't think the majority of your like like viewer base who liked that kind of content are basement dwellers or antisocial. I think that's a cop out. I think that's you trying to find an excuse and a way to vilify almost this like that fan base so that you can feel less like morally obligated to see both sides. I know now. I didn't know before. <laughs> it was my realization upon you know meeting more and more fans that I was like, "Oh shit. You guys are are struggling." It was easy for me to identify them struggling when they were outside of my body, but the antisocial basement dwelling incel that was inside here uh, I, I couldn't acknowledge that. I couldn't recognize that. So I needed the mirror to be held up to me. In closing, I want to say that I have always thought that I was an empathetic person because I thought, well, I get angry. I get sad. Of course I got empathy. Seems easy, right? Empathy? I definitely have that. There were moments where like a dog would die in a, in a film and I'd cry. So it's like, of course I have empathy. But... I never did. Uh, I think only in these past couple of years have I gained the ability empathy, and it, I'm very ashamed to admit that. It sounds it sounds really pathetic to say at the age of 32 I've acquired empathy, but I have, and I've realized it because I just like can't help myself but uh, like feel for other people's pain and suffering now. I'm still not perfect. I, you know, I, I think that is, uh, you know, my empathy meters only maybe like a, a quarter of the way filled up potentially, but it's at least there. And uh, I just want you guys to know that uh, you can unlock ability empathy if you, you know, experience more life. That's it dumb. might take you getting hurt a little bit, but uh, it's worth it. It is so worth it. So thank you for watching, everyone. I do want to create more regular content. And, um, you know, I don't want to just have the next five videos be apologies. So mm -hmm. I, I have uploaded a squirrel video on my second channel. If you want to watch that, I guess as one final thing, I just want to thank everyone who's given me the space and the compassion to grow as a person because it's taken longer than it probably should have. I appreciate everyone and i think most importantly i appreciate my wife anisa she has been insanely uh compassionate and health yeah my bad i thought they were just dating i forgot that they got married well and patient in uh you know allowing me to grow over the years and has has legitimately encouraged me to be a better person and not a better person in just like the you know uh, i dubs becoming woke kind of way she has she was the one who said that I should try this boxing thing. I would have never done that on my own because I was insecure and I was pathetic. I, I think that's a bit of a slippery slope because people are going to take that and run with it now. People are going to be like, oh, well, Anissa's making him do all these other things and he's making him change as a person. Again, I, I've made it clear before, I don't think that's the case, but people will run with that. But yeah, so that's the video. That's the, the fucking absolute shitstorm that iDubs is going through right now. I just can't believe it. Like, I don't know, man. That's... I don't know. I, <laughs> I have a hard time because I've kind of already hashed everything out that I wanted to say when we were watching it earlier. But I just don't... It's such a 180 from who he was and... I don't think it was all for the better. I really don't. So...